A remote part of the East Anglian coast provides the setting for this afternoon's play by Nick Fisher. The Turning of the Tide. What a surprise, but how nice to hear from you after all this time. Of course we will accept your invitation to dinner on the 16th. The Norfolk coast will make a lovely change from the chaos of the capital. Oh, thank you for offering to put us up for the night, but unfortunately we'll have to move on after dinner, as we promised to stay with friends near Swatham. Oh. We shall aim to arrive mid-afternoon, as you suggest. Looking forward to seeing you again after so long and your new home. With love, Matthew and Susan. <sighs> hmm, what a pity they want to move on quite so quickly. That does make it all a bit of a rush. <laughs> Never mind. We'll fit everything in, won't we? <laughs> Oh, good. It really is about time we saw them both again. <sighs> Just perfect, isn't it? Exactly their kind of weather. They'd wear drizzly to bite in the shops. You exaggerate a little. I don't know why you accepted. This evening is going to be sheer torture. Oh, I know. She's not a bad cook. Well, I suppose you'd know better than me. Meaning? Simply that you saw a lot more of Lucy than I did. I know more than I saw of Leonard. Anyway, she isn't a good cook. Unless you like that seaweed stew she always used to come up with. A perfectly palatable casserole, Susan. If you like them made with seawater. What is the matter with you? I'd just rather not be going. Well, it's only for dinner. We'll be on our way by ten. No, thanks to you. If I'd left it in your hands, we'd be staying overnight as well. <laughs> your idea of booking into the Royal George and saying we're staying with friends was rather a good one. Thank you. Oh, left here. As if we'd have friends in a godforsaken dump like this. You know, I still find their invite pretty odd. Why? Well, under the circumstances... There are no circumstances. I don't know why you keep going on. In no way could Leonard have connected the takeover with me. Absolutely no way. You don't mind who feeds you, do you? Perfect strangers are quite acceptable. <laughs> now then. Chicken, mushrooms, butter, stock, flour, potatoes, carrots and peas. Oh, we should get the lovely casserole out of that, shouldn't we? I suppose you'll be hoping for some leftovers. Well, you'll just have to wait and see. Oh, dear. Oh, we've forgotten something, Tabby. That won't do at all, will it? Leonard! We haven't got anything to drink. Could you nip over to Linthorpe for a bottle of wine? A nice one, mind. Matthew and Susan will expect something with a bit of class. How anyone can live their whole lives out here is quite beyond me. Simple. How? I mean, they must be up top. Anyone with any imagination would have moved out long ago. I thought you asked not to be disturbed. I did. But it's Roger doing his old woman act again. Hello, Roger. How nice to hear from you. <laughs> yes, well, on our way. Look, look, surely I can leave that with you. Just go straight for the jugular. I promise you there'll be a pushover, okay? Yeah, yeah, right, right. See you on Monday. Real problems? No, it's just Roger and his usual sort of flap. We'll easily clean up on this one. How's Roger settling in? All right, not much more. Think you'll keep him? Mm, for the time being. I can use him for a few months. He's handled this Conway's thing rather well. I'm certainly looking forward to seeing their faces when we break the news to them next week. You know, you really shouldn't gloat quite as much as you do, Matthew. Oh, why not? That's the whole trouble with this country, Susan. No one admits to being a winner. I'm not going to be one of those hypocrites who spend half their lives apologising for their success. Oh, no, I like the way you relish it. I've always found that most attractive. You know that, darling. 
But it worries me when you gloat in front of people. Well, where would you suggest I do it? On top of them. You know what I mean. <laughs> and please, please, no gloating with Leonard. I'll do my best. Promise. Well, at least the countryside gets a bit more interesting from now on. In my view, anything's more interesting than the fens. Even Leonard. I thought you were saying they weren't all that dreary a moment ago. I said Lucy's cooking wasn't. Leonard's constant patter is a different thing altogether. That got to me the very first day I met him. Now, a couple on a walking holiday in Norfolk find themselves in the middle of nowhere. They're not exactly lost, but they don't quite know where they are. Luckily, they come across this old Norfolk boy, just watching the day go by. So, they stop and ask if they're on the right road to get to the inn they're making for. Ah, says the old boy, you are. And how long will it take us to get there? Oh, no, that's something I couldn't say, replies our friend. So the walkers set off up this steep hill. After a while, they hear a lot of shouting, look down and see the old boy waving at them to go back. So back they trudge. That should take you two hours, says the sage. Well, they look at him in astonishment. Why couldn't you have told us that before, they want to know. Well, that's obvious, says he. I had no idea what speed you were going to be walking at. <laughs> you see, this is good. Oh, God. There now, Tabby. Get everything well prepared in advance is my motto. Now then, where are the saucepans hiding? Oh, oh no. Ah, uh, I don't know what you're looking up here for. Get down. There's no chicken for you and none of those cake things either. Uh, you could have a bit of potato, but I suppose that doesn't appeal so much, does it? There we are. Now, a nice big casserole dish. Where are they? I thought you said you knew this area. The A roads, yes. This is a bit different. Pass over Lucy's letter, will you? Ah, Salt Marsh House. Yes, now, let's see. Good. Left. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh, it's not even marked on here. We could always go home. It's a perfect excuse. Sorry, we got lost. Oh, you really are keen on seeing them, aren't you? Anyway, here's how we find the way. Oh. Excuse me. Excuse me. Uh. We're trying to locate the road to Salt Marsh House. Uh. Well, do you think you could help us? What time is it? What time is it? It's 20 to 4. Oh, that's all right, then. You drive in. Well, I don't intend leaving this here. Right, you take the left turn here and go straight home for about half a mile. Now, make sure you have your eyes about you. There's two pine trees on the right-hand side of the road. Branches all locked together like they were fighting over something. Now, opposite them, you have a gap in the hedge and a track leading away. You've got good suspension. More than good, actually. That's handy. We'll stay right on that track and you shall see Salt Marsh House up ahead soon enough. Oh, right. Thank you so much. Nice weather we're having. <sighs> It's the bloody revolting peasants again. What time is it? As if that had anything to do with... Come on, let's get moving. It's typical Norfolk, though. I've almost forgotten how balmy they all are. <laughs> yeah, but uh, don't do business, eh? Now, uh... I must say, Mr James, I'm impressed by your CV. I can't imagine that setting up the post of transport manager here would be beyond you, but uh, I want the job well done, mind. This firm's been in my family for donkey's years, and uh, it was my grandfather who realised the importance of Wells as a specialist feed port for the area, so it means a lot to me. It's a friendly place to work. I don't welcome unnecessary changes, but... My wife spotted an opportunity to expand, and it now makes no sense to keep contracting out the distribution of the feed, so I've decided to establish this haulage department. <laughs> That's why I advertise for a transport manager. <laughs> well, under the circumstances, that would have been wholly stupid to advertise for a gardener or a brain surgeon, wouldn't it? Eh? Hmm? Eh? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Now then, Tabby, what do you think I should wear? Matthew James appreciates a lady who's taken some trouble. At least he used to. We don't want to disappoint him, do we? Hmm. Well, it's either the blue skirt with the green top 
Or the red one with the blue. Yes, I think that's a bit more exciting, isn't it? Matthew will certainly like it. Oh, it's a bit crumpled, though. We've got some ironing to do, Tabby. God! Hi. Oh, Matthew, for heaven's sake! I'm sorry, but this isn't Holland Park Avenue. It's more like the flipping Himalayas. Well, then slow down. You're doing if it. If I go any slow, we'll stop. Oh, well, for God's sake, mind this bend. I'm sorry. Now, this should be... Well, well, well. Good Lord. Is that it? a desolate place. Impressive, though. Pretty big. I was expecting a run-down bungalow. Why ever would they have wanted to buy this? Probably dirt cheap. Dry rot, subsidence, God knows. But they can't have had much money. Not after the uh, little problems they encountered. I hope I don't detect the slightest flicker of any gloating. Not even a minuscule twinge. Besides, my darling, Leonard wouldn't even notice. <laughs> uh, well, uh, there's this Norfolk boy heading for work one blustery morning. When he meets one of his workmates, well, he's a bit surprised because this workmate of his seems to be heading in the wrong direction. What are you doing going home at this time of day, Bo? He asks. Blast, said the other. That's this here weather. I turned round to light a cigarette, you know, shelter it from the wind, and I must have clean forgotten to turn round again after. <laughs> oh, turn round again, uh, you see? <laughs> Oh, that's a good one, that is, yeah. Well, uh, <clears throat> I hope you'll get on with this Norfolk sense of humour. It's a bit dry, not like weather we have round this way, eh? <laughs> but uh, you'll find a warmth in the friendships you can make. In no time at all, every shop assistant and fisherman will seem like a member of your family. <laughs> There's really nowhere like it. It's safe, too. You could leave your front door unlocked and walk the streets without fear at night. It's a lot different from places you hear about in the news nowadays. <laughs> oh, yes. Nothing like the big city out here. It's all openness and sincerity. No secrets. No double dealing. The sort of place I think you'd like. And your lady wife. And you might be wondering why I'm telling you all this. Well, it's because I'm pleased to say I'd like to offer you the job, Mr James. Or rather, Matthew, I think that should be. As I said... We're a friendly firm. My God! Is that her? Try to look a little less like a startled poodle, dear. How do we get? Matthew! Susan, how lovely! Lucy, how nice to see you again. It's been so long. Hasn't it? But, my, aren't you both looking well? Yes, you... you too. Uh, y you, uh, found us all right, then? Well, I'm pretty good with Matt. <laughs> What a wonderful car. Was it awfully expensive? Well, you know how it is. You have to pay for quality these days. <laughs> oh, of course. But then when all was dead... Uh, now, I I'm sorry Leonard isn't here to meet you. He's just popped over to Linthorpe for some wine. Oh, we worry. nearly forgot. And I know how you like a drink with your oh, meal. Oh, you shouldn't have bothered, really. Oh, nonsense. We wouldn't dream of giving our guests anything less than they deserve. Oh, well, c come along now. Oh, we've so little time to catch up on everything. Now, I was going to suggest tea, followed by a nice walk. But the weather's not looking all that secure. Shall we walk first? Yeah, fine. Blow out the cobwebs, eh? Oh, yes, we should be able to manage that. I'm but afraid we're not very well equipped for walking, Lucy. Um, I think perhaps oh, if I could stay... Oh, is that all you've got? Yes. Oh, well, I'm sure I can come up with something. Come on, we'll pop inside and rustle up some wellies. <laughs> well... It's an imposing sort of a place. Yes, that's what attracted us, along with a privacy. It seems very big for just you and Leonard. I'm surprised you didn't go for something a bit smaller. Oh, we wanted somewhere where we could really entertain. Oh, so you know lots of people around here, then? No, no one at all. Now, let me see what I can find for your feet. Won't be a jiffy. What's happened to her? Happened? She looks a bit older, that's all. Older? She looks dreadful. I've never seen anyone age like that in just two years. And to think, you used to find her attractive. Oh, come on, Susan, not now, please. Well, you most certainly did. A little more than I liked, as I remember it. Well, it's not as tatty as I expected. In fact, it's been quite well done up. I don't think much of the wallpaper. Mm -hmm. Might have been all right 20 years ago. Well, it's not that bad. Well, I expect Lucy chose it. Your tastes probably coincide more than I'd realised. Susan, will you please give... <gasps> yes, I thought so. Here you are, sir. 
suits, and I hope they'll fit. They look fine, thank oh, but you. But I'm afraid I can't find a thing for you, Matthew. Leonard must be wearing the only decent wellies he's got. Oh, for driving? Oh, oh well, no, no, of course not. I, I meant they oh, must Please be don't the... worry. They're only a cheap old pair of shoes, aren't they, Matthew? Well, I wouldn't have called them exactly cheap, but over 80 pounds. 80 pounds? Well, they look cheap, which amounts to the same thing, doesn't it? Shall we go? Quite a wilderness out here. Magnificent, though, isn't it? You only moved in fairly recently. Yes. We were staying at a small hotel when we sent you the invite, waiting for the previous occupants to leave. So for the last couple of years after you, uh, finished at Wells, where have you been living? Oh, here and there. How's the cosmopolitan footwear doing? <laughs> Fine along here. Oh, I'd hate to get you soiled. Mm. Now, oyster catchers and red chunks are the two main residents out here. I'm sorry? Birds, my dear. The whole area is famous for them. But how is the big city treating you both? Oh, can't complain. Is it? Very. In fact, it goes been... up and down, of course. Yeah, it's not down a lot. Let's not talk about London, Matthew. It's so nice to be away from it. Oh, but I want to hear what you're getting up to. How business is going for Matthew. How your wardrobe is, my dear. My wardrobe? Well, you have such dress sense. <laughs> Most flamboyant. <laughs> I used to really admire your clothes. Of course, one needs some money. Oh, I don't know. A little can go a long way. It all depends. A lot can go a great deal further, though. Isn't that so, Matthew? Yes, I suppose it is. And is business producing a lot? We're doing very nicely, Lucy. Very nicely indeed. Our profits last year exceeded even my expectations. Oh, tell me, Lucy, although... how have you and Leonard been keeping? I'm much more interested in hearing that than I am in talking business. How have we been keeping? Well, right at this moment, with you here at last, I'm feeling really very well indeed. Now, that is unusual. Most unusual. What is it? An egret. It's a migrant. Wouldn't ordinarily have any business here. It must have been blown off course by the bad weather. Oh, how lovely. Leonard would have loved to have seen that. Will you be back at the house by the time we get back? Mm. Oh, I love the birds, you know. Such delicate creatures. But they can still be as hard as nails when they need to be. Quite fearsome if they're protecting their territory. No easy takeovers with them. Oh, how selfish. I can't stand to see any rubbish out here. Just a moment. Just... Takeovers. Are you enjoying yourself? What? We're trying on about profits and doing very well, thank you. Look, Susan, I'm damned if I'm going to spend the rest of the day pretending we're paupers. If we're asked how we're getting on, I should continue to give truthful answers. Our profits last year exceeded even my expectations. Do you have to rub salt in their wounds? What happened was entirely their own fault. Keep your voice down. I'm just saying, don't open old wounds, that's all. Old wounds? Susan, they've had two years to get over it. Well, I don't think Lucy has got over it. I mean, she's hardly the woman we used to know, is she? Come on! We can go across this way to the sea. Coming! Now, do stop fretting about everything. Enjoy yourself. Quite a storm building out there. How's the house stand up to the weather? Oh, perfectly. Some old things are tougher than they look. <sighs> Shouldn't we be getting back? We might get soaked out here. Oh, we've a little while yet, haven't we? Paddling time. What? Who's coming? Paddling in that tent. Why not? Well, I hope you feel up to some running, too. And if those waves get too close, you'll be drenched. Oh, really, darling, you do fret about everything. Well, if you've completely lost your sense of adventure, at least you can guard these boots for me. I'll try not to drown. <laughs> Still full of spirit, isn't she? You could say that. These are such beautiful beaches, aren't they? The sand is so splendid here. Just runs through your hands. Feels good, doesn't it? You know, it fascinates me to think about how it was formed, the sea patiently grinding it down from stone. Given time, anything's possible, isn't it? Anything at all. I suppose so. All those years leading to this, the past is always with us. You can't shake it off, can you? Can you, Matthew? Look, Lucy, that's all dead and buried. One misguided weekend two years ago has no bearing on my life now. I really think you should forget about it. Weekend? What are you talking about? Yarmouth. I'm sorry, Matthew. You've lost me completely. You must have misunderstood me. Well, I presumed when you mentioned... <sighs> all right, let's forget I said anything. Ah! Oh, my God, Susan. It's all right. What's going on? What's the matter? What... What's all that about? You frightened the life out of me. Oh, I just got a bit of a shock. A fish or something just brushed against my leg. Oh, you should have caught it. Matthew could have ripped its guts out and we'd have had it for dinner. I 
don't understand it. He should be back by now. Must have got held up in the traffic. Uh, but he'll be here any minute. Well, while we're waiting, might I request a guided tour of the property? Oh, yes. A tour? Well, it's not very exciting. Well, nonsense. If this room's anything to go by, we'd love a look round. Mm. Oh, well, very well. You've seen most of the downstairs already, except the dining room, and that's through there. Oh, very nice. Doesn't look very lifted, Lucy. No, we don't use it much. I find it a bit drafty, too expensive to heat for just the two of us. Yes, What's of through there? Reception room. Oh, oh. Isn't this lovely, Matthew? Mmm. Oh, yes. That's it sweet. would make a really nice study. A good light. Yes. Leonard should think about that. I'll suggest it to him. Oh, I'm sure he'd like a room to call his own. Huh? Yes. Well, that's all, really. Well, what about the upstairs? Just bedrooms. Well, can't we see? Oh, yes. There's not much to see. You see, you haven't got some ghastly secret tucked away up there, have you? Some kind of Bluebeard's lair of horrors. <laughs> well, if you insist. You're right about the views. But I'm glad I'm inside. That doesn't look at all nice. Oh, that's nothing. Just a little gust or two soon blow itself out. They forecast a car night. And across here? Um, uh, bathroom. Oh, that's to say bedroom. Ah. I still get these two confused. Ah, what's the uh, suite your choice? Oh, no, that was already here. We agreed to take it over exactly as it stood. Oh, but I'm being such a bad hostess. I really must get the kettle on for some tea. Now, why don't you go and settle yourselves down in front of the fire? Relax a little. But she's used the phrase twice now. First about birds taking over territory. And then something about when she and Leonard took over the house. That's a common expression. Not when she's using it. It's as if she knew what really happened. Oh, how could she? She hardly understands decimal coinage. And there's something odd about Leonard. If you ask me, there's 101 things odd about him. Always was. I haven't seen a single trace of him. Looking around, you wouldn't know if he'd ever been Susan, here. Susan, what are you talking about? This is his house. So why is there nothing of his to be seen? Didn't you notice that the only clothes in the bedroom were Lucy's? Well, I did notice a very large wardrobe. I suppose you sneaked a crafty look inside. And only female things in the bathroom. Ah, but such a lovely lilac suite. Well, why no shaving things? Well, because Leonard has grown a beard, or they're in the bathroom cupboard. And no boots for you well, to borrow. He's got them in the car. Oh, perhaps. But then there are only women's shoes by the back door. Well, well, maybe he's had a religious conversion and goes about barefoot in sackcloth and ashes. What is all this about, Susan? I don't know. Though, of course, he may not have gone into Linthorpe at all. No. No. No, he may have had a row with Lucy, packed his bags and gone to Timbuktu, which leaves us with a problem of what to drink with dinner. Oh, very funny. But I'm not in a joking mood. Well, I wish you were. The sea air must have gone to your head, but a nice cup of tea in front of the fire and all will be well. For God's sake, don't patronise me, Matthew. All, all right. Tea will be ready in a minute, just waiting for the kettle. Can you remember the first time we met, Matthew? I was just thinking, wasn't that a wonderful day? Matthew was on such form, Susan, so impressive. I can imagine. Leonard and I were quite bowled over by him. I was certain you were the man for us. I easily persuaded Leonard to take you on. The rest you know, of course. Everything looked so good then. It was like a new dawn to me. But it all went so very... sour, didn't it? That was Leonard's word afterwards. Sour. I do hope casserole will be all right for you tonight. Yes, fine. It's one of my favourites, Lucy. You know that. I know it was, but times change, people change. I expect you have some very swanky meals down in London. Oh, not really. We live quite simply. I hope something's left over for Tabby. She's the resident mouse catcher. I sort of promised her, you see. Do you ever talk to animals, Susan? Apart from Matthew, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say that I do much. Oh, but you should. They can be so bright. Ah! Ship ahoy! Won't be a moment! Oh, my God, Matthew. There is something seriously wrong with her. She's just a bit eccentric. Eccentric? Thoroughly unbalanced might be a little nearer the mark. That's it. What? Lucy's a psychopath. Leonard's buried out on the marshes somewhere with oyster catchers waddling about on top of him. All right. But don't say I didn't warn you. <sighs> you know, for once, I really think I'm going to be pleased to see Leonard. Maybe a bit of sanity will arrive with him. Good Lord. Oh, what now? The sea. He's right up to the edge of the track. Oh, that's quite normal for this time of year. Rather exciting, isn't it? Anyway, here's the tea. Sorry that's taken so long. And there's a little treat to go with it. Mmm, homemade. Oh, yes. There you are, Martin. Thank you. It's delicious. Susan? I don't know. Lucy cakes do tend to spoil my appetite. 
Dinner won't be for quite a while yet, and it's a very old Norfolk recipe, just the thing for a cold afternoon. Oh, just a small piece, then. There we are. Now, I forget how many sugars you take. Just one. None for me, thank you. Oh, slimming. Oh, there we are. Thank you. And there. Oh, isn't this lovely? Aren't you having any? I should love to, but Dr Stevens says I mustn't. That's a stomach thing. He says that's nerve-related. I'm not sure about that, but I suppose I have to take his advice. At least I'm living in a healthy spot. The sea air here is so good for one. Oh, of course. <laughs> is Leonard working in the area? Oh, gracious, no. Leonard's not working. He's a man of leisure now, is he? Well, he's certainly very peaceful. Peaceful? Yes. That's a strange choice of word. Is it? Why? Leonard's terribly tidy, isn't he, Lucy? Tidy? Why do you say that? Because I haven't seen a single thing of his in the house. Does, uh, does Leonard still stay in touch with all the old friends from Wells? No, not anymore. Another piece? <clears throat> no, thanks. After the takeover, people just seem to drift away. It's extraordinary he isn't back yet. Extraordinary? If he knows we're here. Of course he knows. Well, how far is it to Linthorpe? Three miles. You could have walked <clears throat> it by now. Not much point when one has a car. How is Linthorpe for shopping? <laughs> Very fancy. Two tiny supermarkets that hardly merit the name, and then all the usual. The wine shop's rather good, though. Hmm. I said nothing but the best for Matthew. Well, I expect Leonard's been spoiled for choice. That's what's holding him up. The fishmonger's excellent, too. I've never seen anyone clean a fish so quickly. One slice down the belly, a flick of the wrist, and all the innards are straight in the bin. Sometimes I wish life was that simple. Don't you? I don't think Leonard's coming back at all. Susan! Well, he isn't, is he, Lucy? <laughs> Look, I'm sorry, Lucy. I really don't know what's You're got into Susan. You're quite right, Susan. Susan. I suppose I might have guessed that you'd spot it before Matthew. No, Leonard won't be joining us. Why ever not? Because he's dead. <sighs> it happened shortly after the firm was taken over, just after you moved down to London, in fact. All that strain, the shock, culminated in a severe coronary. Oh, Lucy, we had no idea. I wish we'd known. Why? So you could send an expensive wreath and a few well-chosen platitudes when the whole thing was your fault? I'm sorry. You were certainly very clever, but a little too confident wasn't all that difficult to follow what you'd done. Just a shame that we hadn't noticed earlier, of course. I told you she knew. Shut up. I don't know what you're talking about, Lucy. We trusted you. That was our mistake. You see, Leonard and I were of the old school. A world where you could still trust people. I dare say that isn't considered very bright in modern business. And as I say, you were clever. The way you overstretched our happy family business with your claim that only by massive investment in capital equipment could we hope to expand was very astute. Very astute indeed. When you knew that could only lead to crippling cash problems and that some of our new and more predatory creditors would rapidly sue for repayment. But Lucy, why would I have wanted to do all this? Oh, really, Matthew? I haven't got the intelligence of a two-year-old. I now know you were also a partner in the firm that was behind the takeover. I said she knew. I thought so all along. All right, so she knew. So what? Look, Lucy, I'm afraid I'm not sorry about what happened to your firm. Leonard was living in the past. He hadn't a clue. He'd have gone bust in a couple of years anyway. What I did changed nothing. It killed my husband. It killed Leonard. Oh, that's rubbish. There's no way you can blame me for that. But I do blame you, Matthew. However, I've already evened the score. Everything's as it should be Lucy, now. Lucy, you're not making sense. I really think you may need to see a doctor. Actually, I think it's you who needs the doctor. Oh, and Susan, of course. But even then, it would be too late. What do you mean? I had to stop Tabby from eating any of the cake ingredients. You see, laburnum, you and belladonna are all rather poisonous. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Lucy, this is also ridiculous for words. Are you trying to tell oh, me Oh, dear, you... Matthew, you just won't believe the truth, will you? Very well. Let's all sit back and wait for the pain to start. I am not going to be frightened by some stupid schoolgirl prank. They're all there on the kitchen table. You, Belladonna Laburnum, she's really done it. You can't have. Now you know why I didn't have any. You're mad. Matthew, we must get to a doctor. Mad. Matthew, come hey, on. Linthorpe, it will only take a couple of minutes. Off then, are you? Goodbye, then. Oh my god. But we have to get across 
You have to, Matthew. Oh, do something, for God's sake. It's not even worth trying. The water's at least four feet deep, probably more further on. Perhaps there's another way back. No, we're completely cut off. I've never seen a tide like it. We'd be swept away by the current. The car phone. What? The car phone. The car... Call the police. Get them to send a launch or something. Yeah, of course. smashed. She's totally wrecked it. We can't get out. Oh, there must be some way out. There must be. No, I don't think there is. Oh, she's really thought this through. The timing's perfect. We're trapped. We can't just give up, Matthew. What the hell else can we do? You could both come inside with me. <gasps> Poison, believe me. Oh, there you are, Leonard. Mm. You found our guests as well. Yes, now, Lucy, old girl, you've been very naughty. You gave Matthew and Susan a nasty shock. Oh. I've told you before about this sort of thing, haven't oh, I? Oh, but I didn't really mean to frighten them, at least not badly. Ah, but you did. Now, what did you say to them? <sighs> sorry. Yeah, I'm not quite sure they could hear that. I'm sorry for playing tricks on you. That's better. Now, uh... Is uh, is this the cake? Yes, your favourite. Mm. I thought they'd really enjoy a piece. Right. Now, uh, just to set your minds at ease. Mmm. Mmm, it's a very good one, Lucy. I knew it. Mm. Steve, it's perfectly all right. Now, why don't you take a seat for a moment while I put Lucy to bed? Oh, yeah. no. What is going on? All in due course, Matthew. <clears throat> now, come along, my dear. Time for a little rest. Oh, Leonard. No, oh, Leonard. Come along. I can't take much more. Let's get away from this madhouse. Oh, it's rather tricky with that tide. I mean, as soon as we possibly can. I really can't stand in here much longer. Look, it's OK. Leonard's obviously got the situation under control. Oh, well, I certainly hope so. Anything might happen in this place. Well, I'm sure everything's all right. <laughs> I mean, I haven't got a clue what's happened to Lucy. We're obviously in no danger now. Not sure I fancy anything she's cooked for dinner, though. Maybe <gasps> Leonard will rustle something up for us. Matthew. Yeah? Sometimes you amaze me. Making jokes at a time like this. That poor woman. P poor woman? After all, she's just put us through. Oh, you know what I mean. She's obviously quite insane, and ultimately that must be your doing. It's your fault. She said as much. Rubbish. I do the same again. It's hardly my fault that Leonard's such a hopeless... Leonard. Oh, <laughs> a good stiff brandy all round, I think. That's not a bad idea at all. Yes. Right now. Here we are. Susan. Thank you. Must have been quite a shock. There we are, Matthew. Thanks. Cut off by the tide and no way to escape. Yes. Well, this should help to calm your nerves. Cheers. 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 Leonard. Hmm? Oh. What's happened to Lucy? Well, perhaps you prefer not to talk about it, dear. Oh, no, no, no. No, it does me good to talk. Well, she became totally obsessed by the takeover, accusing anyone and everyone of being in some kind of a conspiracy to destroy the firm. Well, oh, you know better than most just how hard it is to be sure who's controlling who these days. Oh, yes, yes, yeah, absolutely. Well, Lucy was positive, except every day it would be someone different. Finally, it led to a breakdown. Oh, within a few months, all our friends had gone. There was no point in staying in that area, so we moved along here. Isolated. Away from it all. But, uh, <coughs> I must apologise for leaving you alone with her. The thing is, you see, the doctors have been so very pleased with her progress... I thought your visit would help, but I'm afraid it looks like she's slipped back a bit. How awful for you. Mm. It can be difficult to keep smiling sometimes. <sighs> it's incredible how she had everything away belonging to you. You know she told us you were dead. Oh, she's back on that, is she? Mm. <laughs> Obsessions are such strange things. At one stage, she even believed I deliberately allowed the firm to go downhill to stop <gasps> her having all the luxury she wanted. <laughs> Good heavens, a blue throat. A uh, blue throat? A uh, second tree along. You won't see many around here. It's a migrant. Like an egret? That's right. We saw one earlier. Uh, Lucy pointed it out to us. Lucky you. They're very rare. Now, uh, help yourselves to the brandy. I'd just like to make sure that Lucy's sleeping all right. 
then perhaps we can discuss happier things. Hmm? <laughs> Maybe even have some dinner. After all, that is why you came. Leonard, I really think we should be moving. I, uh, I know you must be very upset. Hmm. Anyway, I can only apologise. <laughs> but I would like you to stay, please. It would mean a great deal to me. The moment that tide turns, we are getting away. I've never been so scared. It's only just beginning to hit me. Come on, easy now. I'll admit I was pretty frightened myself. Especially when I realised the car and the phone were both completely useless. Talking of cars, did you see Leonard's? Uh, No, what's he got? I don't know. I didn't see it either. How do you suppose he got back through all that water? It probably flew in like that damn blue throat. (laughs) (laughs) Another drink? Just a little one. I wonder how long it'll be before the causeway's open again. That's funny. What? There's a note on the tray. Dear Mrs Oldfield, further to our telephone conversation last week, this is to confirm the booking on Saltmarsh House for the weekend of 15th to 17th of May. Thank you for your warning about the tides at that time. We understand where to find the keys in the outhouse, where we will leave them on our departure. I enclose full cash payment as requested. Yours sincerely, Matthew James. Matthew? Yeah, Matthew James. <laughs> I don't understand. It's like someone's booked this place in my name. Matthew! Susan? Susan, what's the matter? Oh, my God. Oh, Susan! Susan! Now, come along, my dear. Oh, thank God. Leonard, if you're so lucky, it may be there. Oh, I do hope so. There's a secondary alarm lock there. Oh, how lovely. My first blue Oh, Isn't it pretty? I have a take, man. Help us. I'm it. really sorry I missed the egret this afternoon. Yes, that was a real fight. <laughs> Leonard, please, please help us. <laughs> you know, oh. my dear, I think it's time we were going. Oh, no, no, no. no. Oh. Leonard! Leonard! Five minutes or so. Ah. You sure you put enough in their drinks? Don't worry. They'll be dead by now. <laughs> the perfect murder. Oh, yes. <laughs> no one saw us, not even Mrs Oldfield. No record of foot passengers on the Cross Channel Ferry. Right. And no one will be checking that little car higher firm in Kent. <laughs> Oh, yes, the police are bound to think they took the house for the weekend and committed suicide for unknown reasons. No one will ever think we were involved. Perfect. <laughs> not quite, Lucy. At least, not for you. What do you mean, not for me? There's no trace of me. But your fingerprints are all over the house. Oh. If anyone thought to look, Matthew's signature on that letter could always be checked against your handwriting. And the car hire in your name will finally be traced by careful detective work. But there's no reason why they should go to such lengths, is there? None at all. Well, there you are, then. None at all, that is. Until they find your body in the sea. (laughs) When they what? When they find your body floating out here or washed up on the beach. Leonard? I'll assume you killed Matthew and Susan and then committed suicide. For your greed, none of this would have happened in the first place. No. You wanted the firm to expand. You wanted Matthew to be appointed. You wanted to be part of this brave new grab all that you can world. But now the old world wants its revenge. No. Together we can get away with this. And you slept with him. Him. Uh, That animal. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Leonard. He destroyed me and you helped him. Please. If you harm me, you're bound to be caught. Ah, but I've been in France all the time, and I can prove it. I booked into the campsite on Friday, and I'll book out on Sunday. That hardly proves you were there today. I removed the visitor's book from the local church and left an identical one in its place. (laughs) On my return, I'll simply copy the entries from that into the original, with my own signature, dated today, somewhere in the middle. 
Now that is the basis for a perfect murder. <laughs> I'll be as free as the birds. Perhaps I'll even migrate like them. Follow them to the sun and the solitude. <sighs> Goodbye, Lucy. Goodbye. Such a shame you can't swim. <laughs> Perfect, yeah, sounds like it. So what went wrong? Nothing. Well, it looks like it with you here in prison. Something must have held you up. Yeah, you got back to the campsite later than you wanted, so they knew you weren't there through the weekend. I got back on time, as planned. Well, it was a visitor's book, then. Either someone noticed a swap or the law checked the handwriting of all the entries. Neither. Well, did someone see you in Norfolk? Not a soul. Then you must have left a clue at the house. As far as I was concerned, the place was as clean as a whistle. Well, then I give up. How do they latch on to you? They didn't. It was the perfect murder. Five years went by and no one suspected a thing. I was left to the sun, the birds and solitude. <laughs> then what are you doing in here? A year ago I came back to Norfolk, walked into a police station and gave myself up. You did what? <laughs> Matthew would never have done that. Well, me neither. But I couldn't carry on hiding it like he would have done. That would have just reduced me to his level. And I missed Lucy. He made me hate her and kill her. I couldn't live with that. But by confessing, I really have beaten Matthew. Don't you think? Ah, Red Shanks. <laughs> oh, uh, by the way, have you heard this here story? Now, there's this Norfolk boy heading for work one blustery morning when he meets one of his workmates. Well, he's a bit surprised because the workmate of his seems to be heading in the wrong direction. What are you were doing going home at this time of day, Bo? He asks. Blah, says the other. That's this here weather. I turn round and light a cigarette, you know, shelter it from the wind, and I must have clean forgotten to turn round to get after. <laughs> That's a good one, Kim Wall played Matthew, Joan Walker, Susan, Elizabeth Proud, Lucy, Peter Tottenham, Leonard, and Peter Craze, the prisoner and the local man, in The Turning of the Tide by Nick Fisher. The director was Martin Jenkins. <laughs>